Welcome to the first episode in the RailsCast Pro series. Thank you for subscribing. In this episode, we'll take a look at how to create a presenter from scratch. Now, the example application we'll be working with is the same I had in the previous episode, which was on the Draper library. So what we have here is a profile where user has an avatar and other user information, and we have other users which don't contain as much information, and we need to provide a proper default, such as a default avatar image, saying none given, where information is blank, and so on. So there's a lot of behavior changing on this profile page, which can lead some complex logic in the view. And here's what that profile template looks like. It looks pretty complex with a lot of logic going on here, but it's all view-related logic. And whenever you're in this situation, a presenter is a good way to go because it will clean this up significantly. Now a presenter is basically just a simple class which has knowledge of both the view and the model and it's a great object-oriented way to handle complex view logic. So let's create one here. The first step is to make a new directory under the app directory called presenters. And then we'll make a new file here that's specific to the model we're working with here, which is the user. So let's make a new user presenter, .rb, and then just make a new class called user presenter. And then we can make an initialize method in here which accepts both the user model and the template object because it's a combination of both the model and the view layer. And then we'll just assign those to instance variables for now. Just like that. So now we just need to work on extracting the view logic into this class here. Oh, by the way, a quick note here. In previous versions of Rails, it was necessary when adding a new directory to also add it to your application configs auto load paths. But it looks like in Rails 3.1, this isn't necessary. If you'd restart the app, it should automatically detect the app presenter's uh, directory here, and you, so you don't have to add it to the auto load paths. Okay, back to our complex view logic here in the template. We know we need to extract this all out into our shiny new presenter class, but how do we do that? We first need to instantiate our presenter somehow, but where do we do that? In Draper and other presenter libraries, it's common to initialize your presenter in the controller action, so we might do it inside of our show action here. But I disagree here. I don't really think controllers should be aware of presenters at all. I think that's more of a view layer thing. So that brings us back to our view template here. And what I'd like to do is create a new helper method that helps in creating presenters. So let's make a new method called present, and it'll accept the model that you want to create a presenter for, in this case our user, and pass in a block through this that will return our user presenter object. So we'll just put this all inside of the block, and that way we have our presenter available to us inside of the view. And then going inside our application helper file, we can define that present helper method, and we'll have this accept the object, and I want to make it except an optional class argument as well so that we can customize what presenter class to use. So if a class isn't specified, we want to determine the class based off of the objects class followed by the word presenter. So in this case, it would be user presenter and call constantize on this so that it's an actual class uh, constant here. And then we want to instantiate our presenter by calling class.new and then passing in our object and self because self is going to be the template object which has all the helper methods that we want to access. And then we can yield our presenter if a block is given, and finally return our presenter uh, back from the method. So now we have a convenient way to access the presenter for any object from any template using the simple present block. Now we can move on to moving some of this logic into that presenter. So for example, this lot of logic right here, it's for displaying the avatar image, so let's move that into our user presenter and just call avatar on that. So inside of our user presenter here, let's define that avatar method and just paste in the same logic that we had in our view. Now to access any helper methods, such as this link to if call, we'll need to access that through the template. And I like the uh, Draper convention of using the h method. So let's make an h method here, which just returns the template object. So that way we can just call this through the h method. So we'll need to do the same for this image tag method as well. And our avatar name call here is actually a custom helper method. Whenever you see custom helper methods here, consider moving those into the presenter too. So let's do that here. 
And so here's what our avatar name method looks like. And whenever you see a helper method where you're passing in the model object that it's going to work off of, really consider moving that into the presenter. So I'm just going to move this code into the presenter. Let's make a little private section down here. And what we're going to do is just reference the user directly because we don't need to pass it in as an argument anymore, just like that. Oh, and we don't need to pass the user in when we call the method either. I love these kind of refactorings. So let's try reloading the page here. And our presenter works. It looks exactly the same, has the same functionality, but our view is a bit cleaner. Now over time, you'll probably have multiple presenters, so you'll want to generalize the common behavior between them. So let's take this bit of code, for example, and move it into a base uh, superclass. So let's call it base presenter and make a new file here called base presenter and then make a class in here called base presenter and then paste in that bit of code that you want to move up into here. Now you'll need to generalize some of this. For example, this initialize method where we're calling user directly here. We want to make this more generic to handle other cases. So let's just call this object like that. But now the problem is that we have no way to reference our user object directly. We could rename all these to object, but I like to have something more specific and maybe use a method. So let's make a class method inside of our base presenter here called presents, and then give it a name. And then what this will do is define a method called that name, and then just return our object. So that way, the way we can use this is inside of our user presenter, just say presents a user, and that way it will give us a user method which references the object that we can just refer to directly without having to go through our instance variable. There we go. Now our template is still a mess. There's a lot more code we can move out into our user presenter, but these steps are pretty much identical to what I showed you in the previous episode, which is on Draper. So if you want to see the exact steps of the refactoring, check out that episode. Here, I'll just do them really quick behind the scenes so that you can see the end result. And there we go. Here's what it looks like with all of that heavy logic moved off into the presenter. The template's much easier to read now, and it's easier to tell exactly what the structure of this template is. And here's what our user presenter looks like. It's now filled with nice little methods to handle all of that logic for us. A couple points of interest. One is that I'm using delegate up here to delegate the username method directly to the user because I'm referring to that in here in the view, just calling user presenter dot username. And since I don't need to change it at all, I'm just uh, pointing that directly to the user. Something else of note is that I created this markdown method inside of the base presenter because it's a pretty generic method for just doing markdown on anything. So it's going to be available in all presenters so I can easily access markdown there. And also notice that I'm rendering HTML down here with this content tag method. Uh, this works great for simple tags like this, but if you have a lot more HTML, you might want to move that into a partial and render that, or use some kind of template language such as Markaby. Now here's a quick tip. Currently we have to access helper methods through the H method every time. But if you don't like doing this, what you could do is set up method missing to delegate every unknown method to the template. Here's how you could do it inside the base presenter here. Just define method missing, have it accept any arguments and a block, and then just delegate those, just call template.send. That way, anything that the presenter doesn't know about will just be sent off to the template. So this means anytime we call a helper method, such as on our a user presenter here where we're calling image tag, uh, we could just strip off the h call and just call image tag directly because that will fall through to the template through method missing. Now something you might run into down the road is the need to access a presenter from the controller layer. For example, inside the show action here, maybe we want to use our presenter to help render some JSON. So we could say uh, present uh, user and then just say to JSON or something on it. But this won't work here because our present method uh, is just a helper method. Well, here's a tip. You can make a present method for your controller too by adding this bit of code to your application controller. So now we have a present method here. And the trick is to call view context instead of self when you're instantiating the presenter because view context will be that template object that normally renders the view. 
All right, so now our application is humming along nicely. Everybody's happy with our clean views using presenters. But what about tests? How do we test our presenters? First of all, make sure you have high-level integration tests using Capybara, like I showed in episode number 275. But one of the nice advantages of using presenters is that it makes it easier to test view logic at a lower level. So let me show you how to do this here, first in test unit, and then in RSpec. So if you open up your test directory, you can check out the unit directory and make a new folder in here called presenters. And then make a new file in here called user presenter test or whatever presenter you want to test. And then in here we can require our test helper and then make our class, which is user presenter test. And the key here is to have it inherit from action view test case which normally you inherit from active support test case. But here, this will give us a nice method to access our view for presenters. And in here, we just create a simple test. Let's say, uh, says when none given. And then in here, we want to uh, create our presenter, user presenter dot new, and then pass in our user object and our view template. So we can just call view on this, and that'll pass in the view template, and because we're inheriting from action view test case. And in here we could do an assert match, say uh, none given, when we call presenter dot uh, website. So we can run rake test here to run our tests. That should automatically pick up our presenter test, and there we go. This is our passing presenter test because that already has that functionality that we tested. Of course, you'd want to test drive this and also start with a failing test to ensure your functionality actually works. And now for testing presenters through RSpec, what we could do is just inside our spec directory, make a new one here called presenters, then make a new file here called uh, user presenter spec.rb. And then in here, we just require our spec helper and then describe our user presenter class. And the key here is to include action view test case behavior. And this has a similar effect as uh, inheriting from the action view test case like we did in test unit. So then we can basically do the same thing that we did in a test unit, but update it to work with RSpec. So we can say our presenter website dot should um, include none given, like that. And then when we run rake spec, we should see a passing spec, and we do. There we go, it works. Now instead of including this behavior module in every presenter spec, we can extract this out into the spec helper file. So instead of the config block of your spec helper file, just add this line right here. Uh, this will include the behavior test case for every file inside of the spec presenters directory. So that way it'll do it automatically for you. No need to include it in each one. Now here's a little gotcha to be aware of while testing presenters. And that is that the view object that you pass into the presenter, it has access to all the helper methods in your application except those defined in the controller. So for example, if let's say you have a current user method in your controller and you specify it as being a helper method by calling helper method in your controller, you won't be able to call it from the view uh, object here. It'll just say method undefined because it doesn't include those. So what you'll need to do is to stub out this method and then supply any value you want. And you'll probably want to do that anyway because it's likely dependent on the user session or cookie information. Well, that wraps up this episode on creating presenters from scratch. Now that you've seen what's involved in creating presenters from scratch, I hope that helps you decide on whether to go with your own custom made solution or with a gem such as Draper. Either way, I encourage you to stay alert and look for areas in your view templates uh, with complex logic that can be refactored out into a presenter because it really cleans it up. Well, thank you for subscribing to Railscast Pro. I really appreciate the support and I'll see you next week.